cannot understand how dithiocarbamate residues can be found on cucumbers in February. This is crazy. They're not even allowed to be used on the crop and there's no need to use them. How can this be? The whole delivery will need to be rejected. We have to stop production and no more cucumbers can come into the supermarket until we find out what is really happening. This was part of my introduction to the world of pesticides. The incident happened more than 20 years ago and at that time of the year cucumber crops were routinely tested for pesticides including dithiocarbamates. So for more than a week the whole production had to be stopped. The cucumber grower was really upset because they were, had put lots of heat into the crop at that time of the year, so it was really expensive to grow and really important that they could sell their crop. After lots of head scratching and trying to work out what the situation was, how could this residue that was really unexplained be there, we found out that the person taking the samples had been wearing latex gloves and the residue detected was from the latex gloves, not from a pesticide being used at all. So production could recommence and supply into the supermarket. Um, and needless to say, the person did not wear latex gloves from that point onwards. So how can latex gloves give a residue of dithiocarbamates? Well, it turns out that a chemical very similar to dithiocarbamates is used in the manufacture of latex gloves and hence when the cucumbers were tested we've managed to find a residue of dithiocarbamates. Now dithiocarbamates are a group of fungicides that are commonly used for seed treatments and also for spraying the crop to control various fungal diseases. The chemicals um, that make up this group are shown on the slide, I'll show you shortly. This gives you the approval status in the EU currently and also um, whether MRLs have been set for the different chemicals individually or as dithiocarbamates as a group. So sorry there's so much information on there, but all those eight um, chemicals listed are all defined within the dithiocarbamate group. And as you can see, soon there will be none of those that are approved in Europe. Now, when testing for dithiocarbamates, it's important that you say to the lab specifically, you want dithiocarbamates tested. It's not included as part of a general generic um, multi-residue screen but has to be tested for and usually an additional cost paid for that assessment. Now what happens in the lab um, means that any dithiocarbamate in the product has to be converted to carbon disulfide gas which sounds quite a strange thing to do but the compound breaks down so easily in the lab that they have to use a special method to convert the chemicals that are present there to carbon disulfide and that then is measured uh, by the laboratory. It means that any sulfur that's within the product, within um, what you give to the lab for testing, will indeed be converted to CS2 gas as well. So things that contain a lot of sulfur can give you a false dithiocarbamate residue result. So things like brassicas, so cabbages, Brussels sprouts, um, and also even things like papaya can give you a false residue result. It turns out that the sulfur in the seeds of papaya which get um, converted to this carbon disulfide gas. Now the MRLs for the dithiocarbamates are reported generically. So all those eight 
have an MRL, which is quite unusual. However, there are three that you can test for individually, the single and light methods. And those three are Thyram, Zyram and Propaneb. And they have their own MRLs that are applicable. So finally, please remember, do not use latex gloves when you're carrying out your residue test, sampling for residue testing. Also, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can be kept updated with any changes to the MRLs or approval status of the dithiocarbamates. Also, please have a look at the website, psi-advantage.com, where you'll find more information about the pesticide courses we offer and other services that we provide. If you've got any questions, please do get in touch and I'll do my best to answer them.